Hello and welcome to this video which is about snap modes in Cubase. So this is one of those areas where you probably know most of this but I'm pretty sure you won't know all of these things or all of the ways to use them. So stick around for the whole video and hopefully you'll learn something. First things first, obviously the clearly useful grid mode which everyone knows. So if we are in bars and beats mode and we're set to grid, anything you move will snap to that grid. This is the kind of standard sequencing thing that has been around for a long time and everyone knows it. So you've got some useful options here, particularly adapter zoom, because what adapter zoom does is it adapts it to your zoom level. So as you zoom in, you get more and more snap points. You see there it's going in 16th, whereas if I zoom out a bit, it will go in quarters, there it will go in eighths, etc. So that's often what I leave it set on, but I'm gonna put it on bar for the time being, just to make it nice and easy to see what's happening. The next mode is grid relative. Grid relative is really useful when you have something that you've recorded, typically audio, but sometimes MIDI, where the part boundary is not on a bar and you want to move it, but you don't want to change its timing. So if you were in normal grid mode and you move this, if I try and move it over here, you can see we've ended up changing the timing because it's no longer starting where it should do. If you put it in grid relative mode, it will move exactly a bar from the position it's in. So you see it's got this offset of 263. And if I move it to there, it's still got that offset of 263. So this is a really nice way of dealing with those situations where you don't want to have to put a snap point in and this, that, and the other. You can deal with this really quickly. So grid relative is really good for those kind of situations. Next up is events mode. So events mode allows you to snap to any events which are happening. So if I grab this audio here, we can see it will snap to the beginning of that, the beginning of that, but also the end of this as well. So you see there, we're snapping to the end of that, the beginning of that, the end of that, and so on. This is really useful when you're lining up lots and lots of events, and particularly when you're working with voiceovers or avant-garde soundscapes or anything where you haven't got a clearly defined grid or tempo, or you just want to make things line up. Often the case I find with a lot of backing vocals, rather than spending a lot of time uh, snapping them, you just cut one accurately, and then you can get all the others timed up much more easily. So I spend a lot of time using events mode. Now next is cursor. Now it's kind of similar to event mode, but the, uh, the event is the cursor position. So often I will find myself needing to play something at a particular time where maybe nothing else is happening. So you just place the cursor, and then you can see now it's snapping to that cursor there. And also the end of the event will snap to that as well. So it's pretty useful for setting timings where you need something to happen exactly. Now, the last one I want to look at is shuffle mode. Now, this is typically the one that people don't know about or have tried briefly and haven't liked. So shuffle mode effectively makes gravity work from right to left. It can be really useful, particularly when you are editing voiceovers, etc. So here I've got this example of a voiceover, and let's say I want to get rid of the green bit. The normal workflow, let's see if we turn off snap, would be to delete that and then select everything to the right. Now there are commands to do this, but if you're not aware of that, and you've got this sort of monstrosity where you've got several thousand events to the right, it's easy to make a mistake. And if you're working quickly, which you tend to do with voiceover work, it is easy to make a mistake and miss something, change the timing, etc. If you use shuffle mode, it's much easier. So if I turn shuffle mode on and I delete this, look what happens to all of these parts on the right. When I delete it, bang, instantly moved over to the left. Gravity has worked that way and everything has moved that fixed amount. Makes it much easier to do that kind of thing and not make a mistake. The other useful use for shuffle mode, which is probably more useful in a music context, etc., is the common situation where we want to swap two parts or maybe change the order of them. So instead of it going this one, this one, this one, maybe we want this one at the end of these three. Shuffle mode is really good for that. And you just click and drag a part to where you want it to be. So if I want to swap these two over, I can just click and drag. You can see it's going to put it in the gap there and they get swapped. If I wanted to do it with all of them, like that, and you can put it back. So it's really, really quick and easy for making those musical substitutions where maybe you want to move 
the first part to the third time round, etc., and move everything around. Otherwise, your workflow typically looks like this. Yeah, drag that over there. Let's put it in events mode. Put that over there, put that over there, and put that in there. Painful. It's much quicker to just use shuffle mode and then just put that there and done. So shuffle mode is much more useful than typically people find. And I think the reason is, if you use shuffle mode on a track where you've got nothing else, if I pick this up, look what happens. Oh, it ends up over there. Can I put it anywhere else? Not really. So typically, I think that's your first experiment with shuffle mode, and you go, well, shuffle mode sucks. It's a pain. For that kind of thing, yes, it does. But for the two uses I've just shown you, I think it's really, really good. It's really quick, and it doesn't make mistakes, which is... Certainly not something that I can attribute to myself. As ever, hope you found that useful. And if you have, please look around at some other videos on the channel and possibly like and even subscribe. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.